a full class. Thanks, Felicia. Hey guys, happy Friday. I'm just hitting my buttons here. And um, today we have a really fun one. Uh, this is a cool idea that I got from you guys. Um, we were doing some fringe earrings a while ago. I think it was like in March of this year. And we were doing a beautiful pattern uh, from Marta Jewelry. It was a spring pattern with greens in it. And um, I got asked questions of, hey, can I use 8-0? Can I use, um, you know, different size beads? And at the time, I wasn't sure how to answer it because we were specific to that pattern. And then I thought about it later and I was playing around with some ideas. I'm like, whoa, yeah, 8-0 beads are perfect in a fringe earring. And they're super fast. And they actually like have just like a very statement look. And um, so, yeah, this is your idea, you guys. So I'm sharing it with you again. <laughs> from you to me back to you and it's um using 80 so if you've got 80 in your stash and you um are looking for some more inspo for these guys um here it is there's also some new beads um that i pulled in and i thought how cool how serendipitous that it fit with them so one of the things that it fits really nicely with if you use 80 is you get a really nice stack up with this new strand and this strand is a two hole tile bead it's um, got two different sides. So one side is like a half coat with a copper finish. And the other side is this beautiful silk, almost transparent milky turquoise, like little clouds. And it has a um, carving on it, a little cross pattern. So it is it is a really cool, really cool bead. And it um, is reversible. So you can get different looks in your earring. You can get a turquoise side and you can get a bronzy coppery side, which I just think is really, it's inspiring and it's a, an opportunity to design with, right? And then how cool are these? <laughs> you can't walk past this on the strand wall without stopping and taking a double take because it's just like, it's a party on a strand, right? And this one got, it catches my eye every time. And I thought, well, this needs to be an earring. It needs to be part of like a very statement earring. So that's what we're doing here. And um, the rest of everything, I'll just show you guys on the mat. Um, I think you're going to like this one and it'll inspire a lot of, thanks, Felicia, uh, a lot of different color ideas. So the main colorway. The one that's in the handout uses this aqua, and this is a transparent frosted aqua. It's really cool. And then the spacer beads on the fringe are a delphinium delica bead. They're only used just here to make the fringe more flowy. And so it gets a lot flowier if you put a little small bead in between. And sometimes I'll, when I'm doing designs like this with 11 -0, you'll see like I put 15, size 15s inside in between each one, but because we're using Ada, we can use an 11 in between. And, and around 11, it will work just as good. If that's what you want to use, um, that'll also work great. And so those those are the beads, but um, as far as like colors, even though these colors are super bold, I mean, these guys are like, they're standout beads, right? You can really still make it work with a lot of different colors. So the ones that I'm wearing were made of barley, ivory, and Ada. And then I used an 11 Delica silver line gold to do the little like reflecting here. I mean, it's just so cool the way it dances. And those drops, they worked with it. And I like both sides. I like that as the front or the bronze. They both work for me. And then if you're looking for something with a little bit more holiday to it, there's also this frosted color, which is, um, I was just looking at this. It, it, is, it just says green, but it is a frosted AB green. And it's so pretty. And check this out. We have a, an equivalent. Uh, this is one that is called Emerald. And it's, again, it's like the same as the Delphinium in its finish. It's like one of those silk kind of cut ones. So anyway, think about those. Think about colors. Look at what you've got. Substitute 11 for the Delicas if you'd like. That'll all, all work out great. Okay, so those are the earrings and the beads. So what are we making this with? Lots of options. I'm going to grab my thread here. Um, mine are made with the white good thread. Um, you could also use, at the time that I wrote this PDF, in fact, this wasn't in store yet. So I put this one in the PDF. You could use, this is Nymo size D. And both of these threads are going to work great. They're ideal for fringe. Um, and today I'm going to work with black so you can see what I'm doing, but the white is what I used on my samples. And let me show you the difference really quick, just in case you're trying to decide thread color, it is it is uh, going to make a difference. So you'll see the black thread you know, a little more, and it will change the color of the bead a little bit. It'll darken it up just a little. But it works. And so I, whichever one you'd like to use is great. And especially if you're changing your bead colors, I definitely did use uh, the 
the black good thread on this one. You can see it coming through there a little bit, but this one is an opaque bead, so not as noticeable on that one. But um, I wanted to also add one more tip. If brick stitch is new to you and you're struggling with it, you can work with the wildfire for the top part. So for, for this part. And then you can bring in the flowy strand, just weave it in and use it to make your fringe with uh, something a little more flowy and soft. So this will this is stabilizing. It's easier for beginners to get a handle on it if you use the wildfire. So if you're struggling, switch to using the 0.06 wildfire, flatten the end of it with your chain of pliers to get it through your needle. And then just you'll need about 45 to 50 inches of it to do the top. Okay, so let's let's just dive in because there's um there's a lot to show. I'm gonna start with a pretty long strand. So um in the handout I said 120 inches. You could probably get away with more like 100, but if you want to just have extra for weaving around and making sure that it you know that it works, you can. You, you don't have to work with that whole 120. You can also weave in as you go. So no stress if that's a lot of strands for you. Um, but it has a um a trick where you can leave a really long tail at the beginning that you can use to work your fringe so that you don't have to add thread. If you'd like to do that, that's a that's an option. And if so, cut about 100 to 120 inches at this at this step right here. Okay, and I'm just gonna trim that. Okay. And let's get my seed beads out. So for now we just need the size eight. We don't need anything else, just this. I'm working with a size 10 beading needle. And that's one of the hard beading needles. And so since this is the good thread, I can't do our trick where we flatten the end. So I just have to kind of hold the thread in my hand as best I can and try to bring the needle to it. And just give yourself patience and grace while you're doing that because it's a little tricky to thread needles if you're new to it. It does become something that you're like a lot better at after a while. It just it gets easier and easier. Pull down about 30 inches on that or 25 to 30, fold it over and then leave, leave about half of what's left for your fringe. And so, um, oh, look, I got a little bonus bead in there. How cool. <laughs> we'll save that. It's going to go in my special bead pile there. Okay. So for the first step, um, if you're, if you're brand new to brick stitch, I'm going to show you a trick that's unusual, but really, really nice and handy. Um, I'm going to do a peyote start. Again, this is another idea I got from someone in our class. It was last Christmas when we were doing a brick stitch. Someone asked this and I'm like, oh, hey, thank you for that idea too. <laughs> because it works really, really nicely and it's fast. It's basically a way to finish your first two rows of brick stitch without having to ladder in one swoop, just like that. So we're going for eight on the bottom and seven on the top and it's three stack. And uh, I did get an email question from someone I want to answer because I didn't have a chance to answer yet. Um, yeah, you can work with two drop if you prefer. You can even do one drop. The width is the measure that's important here, this part, if you want it to be four, four tiles. But the height here is just for fun. You can do two drop. You could even do one drop here. It does still be fine. I just thought three drop looked really cool. So we're going to grab, basically we're going to grab three beads in, in groups of three. So a total of nine, right? Here's three. There's three more. And here's three more. Slide that down and remember to leave a, a sizable tail because that's gonna become your fringe. And so here's my working side, tail side. Skip those first six beads. So here's three, three, and head back through the last three or the first three you strung basically. So head through that in the direction of your exiting tail and you'll get something that looks like this. It really helps if you take that working the tail thread and pull it apart. You'll get that little pop, good old peyote stitch pop. And then just hold that tight for a minute. Get three more beads and pick those up. And then you wanna go down through. Mine's gonna loosen up on me a little bit. That's okay. Just tighten it again. But what you're going for is to go down through the three beads that are the up beads there. So you see how we did a little turn and we're coming down through those. 
So this is three drop peyote. And it's super speedy. And because there's no um, pattern here, we don't have to worry about what colors we're picking up. So it's nice and easy. So that's all you got to do there. And this will be available, this video that we're recording right now, will be available on, on Monday as a replay. So um, following along for beginners is going to be a little challenging. So I'd, I'd recommend just hanging out and watching, and then um, you'll get that replay on Monday. And you'll be able to see what, we're, what we've been doing and stop and start as you're working along with it. But so we just picked up three. And again, we went through the next upbeat. And we're going to do that for... Uh, a total of eight times on the bottom. We're going for eight stacks on the bottom and seven on the top. So here's three more beads. Pick those up. Come back through here. And every time I'm doing this, it's loosening up a little bit. And I'm going to show you a couple tricks in a second. But one of those tricks is to get the loop almost done. But right before you pull it, tighten the one coming out of the former bead by pulling up on it. Right? And then continue that stitch. And it'll keep it a little tighter for you. Another thing you can do if it's really driving you crazy is after you complete each addition, so after you add each each three, right? You can make a trip around. So you can go through the adjacent bead there. Hold on. Turn and come up through the same three that you just went through. And that's another trick for making it stay tight. And we'll do that at the end when we start brick stitching to keep our ends nice and tight. All right, so let's, let's finish the row, making sure I get three beads. I'm going to go through those three up beads there. Pull tight. Got three. Another tip is the wildfire won't loosen up on you as much. But I actually kind of prefer to work with the good thread at the top as well, because um, I noticed that I do a lot of, toward the end there, we're going to be doing a lot of passes through these beads, and it's nice to have the space. So there's trade-offs, right? It's always a trade-off. And I chose this one just because, you know, it's easier, but I think either way is going to work really well. So just go with the preference. There we go, we've got five on the bottom. And here's six. So we're just picking up three, going through the three up beads. Come back down. Make sure I don't skip any. That's uh, one of the tricky parts. And here's another, another tip. See that little wonky looseness? Just before I keep going, I'm gonna pull this part right here tight. And then pinch it all in my hand, pull that down. It's kind of like knitting, you know, it's one of those things that the tension, you get fast and then you don't think about it anymore. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we need two more sets, a top and a bottom. All right, so here's number eight. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on the bottom. And that count is important if if you're doing the uh, the tiles. Um, I wanted to also answer one other question. Somebody was saying they don't have their tiles yet. They wanted to try the earring. You can go straight to fringe from the bottom here if you didn't get the tiles yet. It's just part of the design for fun. So um, the tiles, uh, if you are using them, the measure per tile is two stacks. So you can make it wider or shorter, like if you just want to do three wider or skinnier, um, that all works. The, 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 the magic number is two stacks per tile. Okay, so uh, a couple tricks I want to show. We're about to start brick stitching. So we finished rows one and two. And what I'm going to do is lock in these by going back through the first sorry, the adjacent here. And then I'm gonna just turn and come back up through this one. 
So I'm all about locking things before I go on to the next step, just so things don't move around. You can do the same with your tail thread. And it actually is not a bad idea because the tail thread is gonna have um, a brick stitch on it pretty soon here too, when we get to the end of this row. And so I'm just gonna go through this really quick. And I'm just gonna bring it down for now, just getting it out of the way. So when I brick stitch on here later, it's just kind of pointing downward. And I wanna show you something in the handout really quick about that. In the handout, I was careful to leave it behind and indicate where it will be positioned if you didn't do what I just did. I, right now our tail thread is sticking out of this bead right here, see? So later you're gonna to have to do this anyway. We just did half of it. We just went down through the adjacent bead and now it's just, it's hanging out here. So later when we do our fringe, I'm just gonna go doop, 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 and we'll start our fringe with it. But for now that's, that's our tail thread and that's what it's doing. Okay, well, let's brick stitch. All right, so let's flip it over. I like to work from my left side to my right side. If you do too, um, that's, that's why I keep flipping it, but it's not required. You don't have to flip it. And let's pick up our first two, our first two beads, which is two stacks of three. So you want three and three, so a total of six there. And then a thread bridge are these connecting beads. So uh, connecting threads that are in between each of the beads. So that's thread bridge one, thread bridge two, and so on. We're gonna be going under thread bridge two and just pulling those beads all the way up. You'll get something that looks super wonky like that. And then come up through those three beads. So the last three that you've strung at this step and pull tight. And when you get that, you'll get, you'll get this. And this is fine, there's nothing wrong with this. If you want it to lock, like where those first three, the little tip I got from Emily Miller, if you guys know Emily, um, you go down through the first three beads here and flip that needle behind the work and come up under that first thread bridge. This is optional, this is just if you want it tight. Pull down, come back up through those three and then just pull that tight. All right. And it just kind of locks them in a little bit more. And the next stuff that we put on top, the next stack, it will um, make that even sharper. So for 80 beads, these are behaving pretty, like, pretty good, I feel like. They're not, it's way less wonky than I was expecting, you know, especially for something round. Usually round beads are hard to wield. Um, so I've got these three. This is the next bead, basically. And we're going to go under the third thread bridge. So the third one here. And pull up. And we'll come up through those three beads again. And I'm being careful not to puncture my thread. And you'll know you didn't puncture it if you can move it like that. And then just pipe down. Same thing again. That's the fourth thread bridge. And coming up through those three. And just tighten that down. Just need to do that two more times. And last but not least, we've got this end one. And remember our tail threads hanging out there? Give it a tug just one more time before you do this. And come underneath the thread bridge there. And then up through those three. And tighten it down. Okay. So that was a decreasing row. You'll automatically get a decreasing row if you work bead for bead for the number of thread bridges that are there. Um, and that just naturally happens. So unless you deliberately increase, you're gonna get a decrease every time. So we're just gonna keep doing that. Here's our next one and it goes super fast with these beads. So again, we're gonna pick up six. These are our first two beads with a row. And we're gonna go under the second thread bridge. Pull tight. And then let's come up through these three. Those were the, the last three there. And again, you'll get that stack. And if you wanna make it really lock, go back through the first three. And then just bring that needle behind. See, just bring it behind and get that first thread bridge. Just come up under it. 
And if that's um, if that's at all stressful, just skip it. Don't worry about that. You can just keep going from from where you were exiting out of these three. Okay, here's three more. So each row, you know, when you start, you'll have you'll want to pick up those first two tides the thread. Whenever I'm working with stacks, I tend to do that. When I'm working with single beads, though, there's that other method where you can just go one bead at a time, but don't worry about that one yet. We're going to do that in November. Here's my last one. Run up through those three. All right, so I need to do one more row, and then we're going to be at our last row. So I'm just getting a little, little speedier here. Second thread bridge, six beads. Up through those first three back down through the first three, the first three strung, and then just bring in that needle under that first thread bridge, back up through them. Next one. One more to go. These Edo beads, they have a sparkle on the inside. It's really cool. I don't know if anyone's noticing that too. It's really neat looking. Okay. So that's our last uh, regular row. We're going to do a stack of three, three stacks of three <laughs> to end it. And then we're going to do the little top, the little uh, attachment for our ear wire. So here's six more. This is going to go super fast. There's our six, flipping it. And second thread bridge again happens to also be our middle. And let's come up through those three. Straightening it out. Last one. So there's all the brick stitching done. That's all set. And all I've got to do is make my loop at the top. And so for that, I made six beads. You could do four. I thought six looked good. It had the symmetry of the three and three. So there's six more beads. And this time, we're just going to jump over to the stack on the other edge and just go down through it. So you just want to go down through that one. and pull tight and there's our loop we need to reinforce that two times um the way to do it is from where your thread is here exiting this uh, stack of three put your needle in between the stacks that are just below it so just go through right there just drop your needle through it and pull and what that did is it just captured the thread bridge that's under this one and then very carefully um, come back up through those three, but try to keep your needle on the uh, facing side so it doesn't go back under the thread bridge and lose it. You'll know you got it because it'll stay put when you pull like this. Let's go around and do that on the other side. So I went all the way through all those beads there. I'm gonna go in between those two stacks below. Pull, pull up. And get back through those beads. I'm going to head one more trip through the loop here. And now let's head down. So what you can do is you can make one more reinforcing pass if you want. You can weave in now if you want to. Or what you can do is you can Keep the thread handy, just in case. So sometimes with fringe, I don't get it right. I don't always measure right. Um, I, I either have too much or too little thread, and this is just what always happens. So before I cut, I've got a pretty good amount of thread up here, right? 
So what I would do if it was just me working is I would get this to be out of the way as much as I could, but I wouldn't cut it yet. So I was going to do kind of a partial weave-in so that it stays tight. One of the ways you can do that is you see how you're coming out of this bead here. Um, you can just go in between these two here, the stacks that are below it, and come up, and then just hug the front of the bead. So I'm, I'm actually trying to push up on the bead with my needle, kind of like when you're weaving, right? So that you don't puncture it or miss it, the thread bridge, and then just pull tight. And now my threads, it's not going to move. It's locked because I just put it on a thread bridge. It's not a totally secure weave-in, but it's good enough for now. And then I'll just let it be for now, just in case I need it. And uh, you can either do this with um, round nose pliers, or you could use a pencil. <laughs> just go ahead and make that pop. So it looks really cool. I usually do that when I'm, photogra when I'm doing my photography. All right, let's move over to our tail thread. Let me get my needle on that. Time for our squares. All right. And we're doing really good on time. I, I wanted to get to this point by this by this time in our class, but I think we're going to have a little bit of time at the end if there's anything that anyone wants to see again. But I just want to make sure I get through it, and then we'll definitely go back. Danielle. So, yeah. Just, but just while, just before you start your next section, because then I'm not going to interrupt you. We had a couple questions about good thread. I'm not sure if you can answer. Sure. Um, so question number one is, do you ever condition it? No, I don't actually put wax on it. It doesn't need it. In fact, that... it will kind of gum up because it'll come off, right? Thank you. It's not going to absorb it. Okay. And the second question is, have you used it with 15 O beads, the teeny, teeny, tiny ones? <laughs> and how many passes do you think you can get through a 15 O with good thread? Um, like on a, a Miyuki 15 and a Toho 15, even five or six. Uh, if it's a check, um, maybe like three or four. Thank you. That's good, Danielle. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> So, and again, guys, I'll come back to Brickstitch at the end if there were questions on that. I know I went a little fast, but the next parts are the most unique. So I want to make sure we really cover those. And then uh, we can always head back and, and uh, show all the rest of that stuff. So remember when I was telling you guys earlier where um, where we left our tail? And so we, cut, we moved it and it's like sticking out of these three right now. I'm going to get it into the edge and bring it over here. Um, we're actually doing this step, but I'm just kind of moving the tail thread along. Also, I wanted to point out, you could work this with the working thread either way. I think I kind of went back and forth. Some of my samples, I had a bunch left over thread. I just brought it down and did the step with my working thread from the top. You could do that here too, or you can use your, um, the other thread. So either way, either way is going to be fine. It actually really doesn't matter. Just get the thread to the spot you need it and use it. That's kind of the, the whole thing there. And so what I'm doing right now is just weave into edge. And there we go. And again, you could do that with, with this thread or this thread. Either way is going to be just fine. So to pick up a bead, um, if it matters to you that they all face the same direction, you'll want to pick up the right hole. So just to figure that out, the best way to do it is just lay it down and look at it in the position you want it to be in and go through the um, the hole that's facing the direction you want. So in this case, I want it to sit like that. So I'm just going through it like that. And then it's pretty easy on the first one. You just come up through the second hole. These, these beads have two holes. Make sure I point that out. See, they've got, they've got two holes in there. So I'm going through one side and then I just came around and coming up to the other side and I continued through the beads above. And so it'll sit just right, right like that. And this next part, it's up to you kind of how you like to, to do the passes. So on some of them, what I did is I came down and I just did almost kind of like a ladder, right, to attach them. But you can do that ladder through the three seed beads if that's what your needle wants to do. Sometimes that feels easier to me and other times it doesn't. And they, the tiles kind of do what they want. So whatever one... It seems like it's working to you. Just try it. And I'm going to show both ways here. So um, the only real difference is whether or not you make a pass through these three as you're doing your ads. So what I mean by that is um, 
when you come back down through this second stack, we're about to add our next tile. And same thing, I'm gonna lay it in the position that I want it to stitch as, so like that. Go through this one, the hole on that side. And we need to come back up through, at a minimum, we need to come back up through that bead, the second hole on the first tile. And that's gonna lock that tile in right next to it. And this is where it's up to you. Now from here, you can just turn and go right back down through that hole you were just through. So like that. Alternatively, if for some reason your needle wants to go this direction, you can keep going through these three here, all the way up and make a turn and then come all the way back down through it. Both ways will work. Sometimes I feel like that's tighter looking and other times I think it's better if I make my turn up here. The whole goal though is just to get that secured. So now we've got this hole still open. So go through this one. And in this case, we do need to continue through those three. So this is our first connection there. Make that turn. Come down through the next open one. Here's our next tile. Let's take a look at where the holes are right there. Just lay it like that, making sure I got the right side facing. And I think, yeah, it, this would definitely work with telos too. The measurements are the same, I believe. The, the big square, not the half or the quarter. Um, so bring this one up. And these are about six millimeter, in case anyone's wondering. Um, and so we've got, see how this is open like that? Same thing again, we need to connect it to the former. So just come up through here. And I'm gonna pull tight there. And you can either do this through the seed beads or you can just go directly through like that. Either way is fine. And they both work and they both look really nice. I just sometimes find that my needle just does the other one. So I just wanna make sure you guys know that either is fine. And so it's coming down through here. And one more time, just checking that I'm lined up and looks good. Last one. So let's bring the needle through the former. This time I'm going to go ahead and just go through the seed beads because that's what happened. It's, both are going to work just fine. And then get that to sit a little tight. And then just come down through the adjacent stack. Continue through that hole if you can. Let's see here. Tighten that. So it's pretty tight. I think it's good. You can also make another ladder stitch around if you need to, a square stitch if you feel like it needs it. I think this is looking good though. And last but not least, Let's come up through here. And now that's attached. Okay, so let's look at our thread situation. I did something kind of weird on purpose. I went to the short end of my strand and worked it. Um, in case anyone wants to see bringing in a new strand, if you wanted to work this with wildfire and you want to bring in a new good thread, I wanted to show that. So I left mine kind of short, but um, I also want to point out that I've got a lot of working thread left here too, because remember we didn't cut it yet. So we can bring in, bring that down and do fringe with that too. So lots of options. Um, for this, I'm going to bring this up and just really quickly weave it in and trim it and then bring in a new strand so you can get a little visual reference on that. I just went up through a bunch of beads. Weaving in, you can kind of do what you want. And, but from here, I'm going to do a, an opposite thread bridge grab. So I'm going through the two beads stacks above. Turn around. And then just go ahead and come right back down. Maybe I'll go through the adjacent. Let's do that one more time. Go in between two. Pull up. This time I'll head back through the same stack here.
maybe one more and then let's trim it. Okay. And my scissors are hiding. Here they are. <laughs> okay. So just pushing it down and pulling up. You could also use a burner if you like to use a burner. I'm still going to leave this hanging out in case I need it. But here's what you'd want to do if, for example, you ran out of thread or you worked your top with a different strand, a type of thread, and you want to switch to another. So in this case, um, if you're just doing the fringe, you only need about 50 inches. It doesn't use that much. Strands aren't super long. Um, so, you know, 50 to 60 inches or so. Let's get that needle. Let's bring that on. Okay, so um, choose a side that you want to work on and bring a needle through any bead, bring the needle through any that you'd like. And what we're going to do is just the same thing you kind of saw me doing a second ago. Hold that tail. This is the tail we're, of the thread we're adding. Come up through an adjacent bead. And maybe I'll go up through one more. Okay, and then maybe I'll grab a thread bridge on the way back down. Anytime you want to grab a thread bridge, just go through, go in between the stacks that are above it. And you can already do a test if you want. So um, this is the tail of the strand I'm adding right here. Let's pull on it and see if it moves. I can still move that. Let's do, let's do some more. Okay, so come down. In between these two. Come up. And let's test it again and see what happens. Again, what we're going for is we don't want this to move when we pull. That's about, that's a lot better. Okay, so I can trim this now. Danielle? Yeah. A couple of us looking at this design right now see a hat. Yeah, you can make an elf hat. That'd be cute. <laughs> Which would be great. Um, I can imagine it as a Christmas hat or a Santa hat. Um, but again, it's a gorgeous design as a triangle. And uh, Cindy B was just saying she could actually see it with a pico edge under the tiles. Oh, yeah, that would be gorgeous, too. Then it wouldn't be so statement. It wouldn't be as long. You could even pico with the little with the drops, too. It'd be cute. Picturing it kind of like here. Let's look at it. Be like that. And the only other question I'm going to ask you, Danielle, because um, you have it right in front of you, is you've been reinforcing a lot. And Kelly would like to know, does it feel stiff now? Yeah. I mean, you can still kind of move it, but it, the important thing is it's not curling on itself like that. And, you know, wildfire will make it a lot stiffer, but again, those passes will be tighter. So it's kind of a choice there. But I think it's fine. And that's how I did all my samples. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Lorena would like to know what a pico edge is. Oh, okay. Um, a pico, you pick up three beads and you go down through the next hole. So you'd come out of this bead, pick up three beads, and then you'd come up through the edge. We can show it. Let's, let's get over there. I'm just going to turn and head that direction. Um, heading down through here. And we've got lots of time. We're heading towards fringe, and I have a sample worked ahead for that. So no worries there. A pico would look like this with three seed beads, for example. You just um, you just come up through the next hole, and you would get something like that. So that's a standard pico. But one thing you could do is you could make that center bead a drop, and I think it would look cute. So try that and see if you like it. Maybe I have a bunch of drops here. Yeah, that's cute. Look at that. You could even put an 11-0 kind of on either side and it might fill that gap a little more and it might give it a little more swing. There we go. I'm trying to sneak out of that bead without getting my thread 
Haha, <laughs> I got lucky. Here we go. Okay. So um for the fringe pattern, um I put that here, but you can do anything you want, really. This was just for inspiration. Anything that you like to do is going to work out really good. Um, so uh, let's see here. I strung a total of 10 8-0s, and each one was spaced with an 11 Delica. And then before I went into the drops, I strung four Delicas, went into the drop, four Delicas, and headed back up. So let's do a couple of those, and then I have a sample worked ahead so we can finish it up uh, really quick. So let me grab the... I just wanted to show at least one turn, one or two turns, so you can know how to do a turn. And again, it's kind of a, up to you if you want to go through the seed beads or not, or just the tiles. Both are going to work. I started with the 8 so I went 8 and then 11 So we're going to do that, so we have 10 8 -0s. So, so far I've got five, it looks like. And so I'm going to get five more. There's five more. And now I need four delicates. And then I need to drop and four more of those. And it's so pretty. I love seeing how this comes together. So skip those, the last four delicas, the drop, and the four after that. Just skip all of those. And bring your needle up through the rest of them. And I'm trying really hard not to skip a Delica. It's really easy to do. So right before you go and do a pull through, just take a look and spin it a little bit. Anything that's not on the needle will hang down. So I was just double, double check it before. And then I still miss them. I was looking at my other sample and I saw one that I missed earlier. It's easy to do. So just go real slow and go back through your tile. And let's take a look at the cock here. Hold on to the drop with your other hand and then just pull with your needle and bring that up. And there you go. That's your first strand of fringe. So how to do the turn. It's totally up to you if you want to turn on your tile, meaning you could just come down through the next one here. Just like that. You can also go up through the stacks above. Sometimes my needle just automatically goes through the three when I'm coming up through the tile and that's totally okay to do as well. So let's do one more strand. I have one more tip I want to share. That's easier to see between two tiles. So let's get our 10 on there. Okay, so I've got seven. Oops, I know six. Two, three, four, five, there's six. Okay, there's my tenth. Just lay it next to the first one before you go any further. And make sure the counts are right. There's a little, nice little way to check it. It'll be a smidge longer. For some reason, when the strand comes back up and tightens, it make it'll it'll take that difference and make it make it do that. But that's close. It looks like I got it right. So I'm just gonna get four beads on here. A drop. Four more beads. Get that other strand out of the way. That gets harder as you go along, but uh, when there's lots of them. Looks like I got through all of those. And here's through my tile. And this time I'm just going to go through the tile. So I can show you another little thought that I was having. It doesn't always um, 
work out this perfect. Sometimes I get a little more gap than I want in between the tiles. This is another chance for you to make them more square and ladder stitch. You can do that here too, if you want, while you're adding your fringe. And then another thing you can do when you switch to the next tile. So um, when I'm exiting from right now, currently my thread's coming out of right here. And what I need to do is come down and go through however I want to get there, either through the CVs or through directly to the next um, tile right here. I want to go here. But before I do that, I might want to do one kind of tricky thing just to get for extra strength and connection. Um, I'm going to go in between these two beads here, which is going to catch the thread bridge that's right there, just before I go down into the next tile, and it's going to lock it. On some of mine, what I found is that really nicely closed the gap, if I had one, up here between the two tiles touching each other. So I caught that thread bridge, flipping it over. I don't have a gap right now to really show it off, but it, if you had one right here, it would tighten it. That little spot there. And so also your thread is, it's, it's going over this thread bridge right here before it heads down through there. And you would just carry on with your fringe. And so on this one, I've got just one more to go. So let's just jump ahead. So we can see a complete earring. On this one, I think what I'm going to do is head up through the beads and back down through the other three because I feel like it needs it right there. And so let's get these over here a little easier to do my pickups. Okay, here's my 10. And let's get those four. Need a drop. And let's get through all these if we can. Almost there. Go through that tile. Go through the beads too. Why not? Okay, grab that drop and pull. In that satisfying moment when you finish your fringe ring. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so and then we've shown weaving in, so I'll just kind of speed through it, but it's just going through the beads again and making a bunch of turns. Super, super easy. So just picking up thread bridges where I can. I might even go all the way to the top here because I haven't done much weaving in on this side. And so here I'm going to, I'm exiting from this edge one, right? And what I'm going to do is go in between these two. And see when I pull down, I just caught that thread bridge that's above it. And I can head, oops, wrong, maybe, down through this one. Two more. Then let's do another turn. Let's grab this. Dropping it through, bringing it down, and back to that same bead. Same stack of beads there. And one more, and let's trim it. I think that's good. down, pull up, and you got it. Okay, so I didn't show you guys findings, but I'm going to do that really quick. So, um, and this has an error. I don't know if you guys saw it, but I got a little overzealous, and I put 11 beads on this one. You know me, I'm going to take it apart, but it's okay. We're living with it for now. At least it's kind of in the middle, right? <laughs> I don't know why, just for some reason I counted 11 there and thought I would just carry on. So, um, but you, I would have seen that if I was paying closer attention. I see it now. Definitely see it now. <laughs> so if that drives you nuts too, don't worry, it will be repaired. Um, 
so let's get the uh two so what i did for these is i put two jump rings on each one so and that was because um it made it have a little more sway and with the 80 beads what i was finding was my ear wire was kind of getting caught in between the beads and it was just coming up really close next to it and it was putting this um you know uh, the beads are like right up next to the earlobe as well which didn't feel right to me so i put two jump rings but you're welcome to put just one if you put one it's going to hang a little sideways if you go straight to the ear wire it's just going to be really close um to the ear but it still will work so don't worry about it if you like it just try it see how you like it these are six millimeter jump rings and these are um the stainless steel ear wires both of these are in the handout the part numbers for for both of these findings and again, these are six millimeter. Let's kind of find the seam really quick on them. These are a pair of like uh, square chain nose, and these are a pair of bent nose. And I'm just going to use a lateral motion and just open that up and bring that on in between the beads. You can try to get it in between the the two threes, but it actually never quite sinks into them. These jump rings are so good. They're so closed. I don't even need to do anything. I'm just going to pop it on there. And so now I've got two jump rings. One's connected to the one I'm closing. And so it's hanging like that. And let's open up the ear wire. The seam side on this ear wire, guys, is facing the facing the hook side. And that's that same lateral motion we used in the jump ring, just to get that open. And then decide what your front is. So I've decided my front is gonna be the bronze. So I'm gonna bring it on so the bronze faces front, which is the uh, other direction from the hook. Close that up. And there's our ear wire. Ignore that strand. Oops. There we go. <laughs> there we go, it works. And so the other ones are here. And they made, and I have another one floating around here somewhere. And then the ones that I have in another colorway are, they're on my ears, but these came out so good. I really like the way that they look, both with the turquoise and with the bronze as a front. So you, you really can't go wrong. I feel like there isn't a color that they wouldn't complement. They would look cute with purple because that turquoise with a purple, almost like clouds, they would look good with the deep sea mix. Um, they would look good with the honey apricot because of that bronze on the front, the copper. All of those are going to work really nicely. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. Um, so any questions for me? We got, we've got five minutes. I know it's a little less time than I'd hoped, but. Danielle, a super quick question, um, because you know everything is bigger on the screen. What is the length of those earrings now that they're complete? Oh, um, yeah, we are. Let me measure one where I got all the fringe strands in a row there. So if you, from the top of the ear wire, you're looking at four and a half. So let me bring it down. And that's if you did two jump rings. So that that last strand, it's gonna it's gonna hit your ear at the at the um, point where it hangs at about four and a half. So it's gonna touch shoulders for most people, and it's also possible to do this as two drop. If you want to take some of that length away without changing the design or the counts, just do that two drop instead of three drop. It'll work great. You can also shorten the the counts here. You can make that eight instead of ten, things like that. The beaded length is coming to um, three and a half there at the top. So if you did a post earring, for example, it might shorten it up. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a Thanks. pretty long, long earring <laughs> for sure. All right. And so I oh go ahead. Danielle, and the only other question is sometimes you use wire guardians, sometimes you don't. Ah, yes. I did not use them here because they'll sink right into that 80. They'll just go right inside it. You could, you could though, start um, when you come out of the top here, a couple of things. Um, if you're going to use one of the wire guardians in our stainless or 18 karat or sterling, you're going to want to taper down to two beads here at the top instead of ending with three because the width of those is about like that. 
and even then you might need to widen it with some chain those pliers it's, it's, it's not going to straddle three um it, it'll it'll need just two so taper back down to two and then um from there add an 11 0 before you go through the wire guardian and come around the well and through the other side of the, and then add another 11 0 before you go back into your you know because thanks danielle yeah and that will work great perfect Danielle, every week that we've been using all the minutes in our class, yes. but I didn't want to give you enough time to show next week's class or oh, not and next it, week, the 13th. Oh, yes. But it gives me a chance to wish a happy Thanksgiving to all my Canadian friends. This, it's next weekend, right? This That's week. right. Oh, my gosh. So it feels really soon to me. I can't believe I said happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> like, oh, no, Christmas. Um. So, um. yes, but then but then the week after that, I show that one really quick. Um, we're going to do some looming. This is a crystal ombre loom design. And it's made with a good broad thread. So if you guys haven't been into Michael's recently and seen the new updates, there's a really beautiful new thread that you should check out. It's made in the USA. It's very, very um, easy to work with. It's got a really nice diameter too. It fits through all these beads. These are 8 -0. This is the Honey Apricot mix. Oh. And I did use... Um, the good thread as my side thread. So um, the, the thread you see that's the weft, if you're familiar with looming, the, the one you go back and forth with is weft, that's good thread. And then this is good rod. You can, I'll be working with a black thread during that class so you can see a little easier, but, um, and then we, you know, we just braided the ends and did a little barrel knot, which is really, really fun. So there's that, there's that class. And then um, for a little bit of fun, this is this is a little wild, but I wanted to do something just kind of statement and Halloween-y for like costuming, right? And so I just went crazy with felt and flatbacks. I was really inspired by Kelly's class last week as well. I got some tips and tricks during that class for how to use uh, the tools better and for how to get things to stick and what glue to use and all that. I'm using the same glue she did. So if you have that stuff from last week, just bring it forward. And it's on good felt. If you haven't seen the good felt yet, that's the... Um, this new felt that they've got in store. And it's, um, I used the black and did a bunch of gluing. And um, it's really fun guys to make a bunch of little glue samples. And some of these start as like a hexagon. I'll show you how to stitch around those. And then we'll make a bunch of pretty fringe. It'll go a little fast. So I'm gonna have some samples worked ahead. I'm gonna have something glued already um, that I can stitch on, but I will touch on how to do some of these designs. And the handout has all of these like, in there. So, if you like them and you want to copy them, I showed exactly how I made them. This was like a spider web, and that one was kind of like an I was going for an evil eye look. Still kind of looks like an evil eye. And then um, this was just a fun pop up crystal, just get some crystal on it. But you could do anything, literally anything you want. It will work out really good. And then last but not least, I just threw another class on that might be already up, which is um, a lot of you guys have said that you love the look of this spacing knot. And it's not tricky to do, but I realized we never taught it. And it's one of my go-tos that I do all the time. And I just couldn't believe like we've actually never done a class on it. So I thought we would. And this is using, um, it's using the same cord. Let's see. I don't have it in front of me. Oh, I do have it, but it's not in its package. I do have the package though. This comes in black too. And so um, that's what I used here for these. And this is the check strands from our Bohemian Crystal class, the, the one that we did um, for the world of jewelry making uh, back in August. Yeah, that's what's up right now. There's more stuff coming. Lots of cool stocking stuffers coming up. Um, I've got a peyote design and a snowflake coming. So I'll show you guys those as soon as they're as soon as they're ready and they're like on the website and stuff. All right, any questions for me that I miss anything? I feel like I'm forgetting something. <laughs> no, Danielle, you got it all. Right yeah, on I schedule. <laughs> wow, we, we threaded that needle. It's only two minutes over. <laughs> yeah, this was an epic one. So definitely, definitely finish in one class. That's pretty cool. Um, of course, if you make anything that you want to share with us, we love seeing all of your posts and all of your creations. And so the best way for us to not miss it is if you tag us. So it's hashtag make it with Michaels, hashtag John B. And then you can also um, post on our blog group um, or Facebook group. Um, which is easiest to find by going to our blog. If you go to blog.johnb.com, you can join the Facebook group right from there. So that's the, I feel like that's the fastest path. 
So we'll see you then. And uh, we will see you for our next class. And happy Thanksgiving to everyone in Canada. Okay, bye, guys.